Hello everyone, this is Lorenzo from Miteco. In this short video tutorial, I'll try to cover the different functionality that as a participant you can take advantage of in the ITF Remote Participation Tool in order to help you familiarize with the user interface and the different features it provides, ranging from Jabber Room to how you can share your webcam or screen or microphone, how to participate in a show of events and so on and so forth. A few things have been changed or improved since the last meeting, so it's probably a good idea to still watch this tutorial even if you're already familiar with the tool in the first place. Notice that we'll only cover generic participation in this presentation, so if you're interested in how to chair a meeting remotely instead, you can find this information in a separate video. To join a meeting session, you'll need to be registered, and if you haven't done that yet, clicking this link over here will actually bring you to the registration page. The authentication process will then go through the data track, where you'll need to insert your credentials. Since to authenticate on the data tracker you'll need to use your email address, make sure that of course the same address is also used when you register at the ITF meeting in the first place. Now I'll insert my own credentials to join an ITF meeting session, which I will only need to do once, because the system will actually remember me the next time I join. Once I insert my own credentials and then click sign in, then the, the, the authentication process will actually start. After a few seconds the authentication process will be done and I should be brought within the room. The first thing that happens as soon as I join the room is that I will be presented with a pre-flight device selection dialog, and in order to take advantage of it I will first need to grant the browser access to my own devices, like microphone and webcam in this specific use case. And notice that different browsers may present these requests in different ways and may actually cache the response from time to time, so you may not need to actually grant this access over and over again. Now that we have a preview of both our streams, this is a good time to actually check whether or not our microphone is working, and if you see those bars moving, then this is indeed the case. And we can also decide to choose possibly some other microphone or webcam device, depending on which one we want to use for this specific meeting. As soon as we are happy with the selection, all we need to do is press complete to actually join the meeting and start participating. Notice that of course we will be able to change devices later on if we want, and we'll see how to do that in, in a few minutes. What's important is that we are now ready to start. Once in the room there are different areas of interest, and one that we'll get to in a few minutes is the one related to our own media controls. Before going there though, let's have a look at the participants list instead. As you can see there is already a chair in the room named John Doe, and several other participants as well. You may also have noticed that some are addressed as Jabber users and some as participants instead. We are participants in this specific use case because we are using the Miteco tool for participating. Jabber users are just using their own Jabber clients to join the Jabber room instead. Since the room may actually be joined by a lot of different people, it may become harder to navigate the list of participants, which is why we added a simple way to search users. So the moment you start typing some, some letters over there, you'll start filtering the list to only display those that you are interested in. This is particularly useful whenever you want to find out if some key participants are already in the room or not. Which brings us to the Jabber room, which you can actually visualize using this other icon in the user interface. When you join a session via Miteco, you automatically join the working group Jabber room as well. This session has been particularly quiet, but normally you'll see the last 20 messages sent to the room before you join, starting from the oldest one. So just clicking this scroll to bottom will ensure that you will automatically go to the last message being sent to the platform. Sending a message to the room is quite easy as well, because all you need to do is start typing in the related box and then hit the send button or hit the enter key. This message will be visible to all users connected to the Jabber room. If you're feeling particularly frisky, you can also play a bit with the emoticons selector that we added in this latest version. As you can see, the chat is currently a separate tab from the participants list, which means that they are by default not visible at the same time. So to facilitate this, we added a button that allows you to detach the chat into a separate window that you can then move around in, your, in the interface as much as you want. The chat will work exactly as before, so you'll still receive incoming messages and you'll be able to send messages of your own, and as anticipated you can move this window wherever you like so that you can actually display it together with other things. The moment you're tired of it you can close it at any time and possibly open it again later on. The user interface also supports private messaging which you can access from the participants list. As you can see while we are hovering over participants a balloon icon appears, in this case let's just send the chair a message 
This displays the new smaller user interface from which we can send a private message to this uh, participant. Let's write a message to the chair, for instance, a message where we are asking when our turn to present comes in this meeting session. This will actually be a private conversation between the two of us, so anything that we'll tell to each other will remain between us. When we join a session, we are passive participants by default, which means that we mostly receive streams from the server before we send anything ourselves. This area tells us if audio is supposed to be working, for instance. If you see this bitrate moving, it means that audio packets are actually coming in. This label informs us that this session is being recorded as is expected, while this slider is actually a volume changer, so it allows you to, to modify and adjust the volume of the incoming audio. For instance, you may want to increase the volume if the incoming audio is too low for your speakers. In case you want to silence the audio coming from the room for any reason, you can do that clicking this icon instead, which will temporarily mute all the incoming audio coming from the room. This other button instead can be used as a last resort in case you lost the audio and it didn't reconnect automatically. This will basically force the audio channel to be recreated for you. There are visual indicators and controls also for incoming video streams. So, for instance, in this case, you can see that there is a frame that is blinking anytime the user is actually speaking, plus an additional bitrate indicator for the video stream as well. Additionally, there are buttons to stop receiving the media stream from the server to actually expand the video so that it's displayed a bit larger in the, in the user interface or to put this current video completely full screen. Let's see how the expand video functionality works. As you can see, we're basically giving the speaker video more room in the user interface and relegating the slides to a thumbnail instead. At any time, we can basically reverse the rules again. We can also stop receiving the video stream entirely, possibly because we don't have enough bandwidth for all the video streams, for instance. At any time, of course, we can always restore the video and start receiving it again from the server. The same functionality is available for all video streams in the platform, which means that the same considerations apply to screen sharing as well. In this case, expanding the, the screen sharing, for instance, will cover the, the list of participants in the Jabber room, while instead unexpanding it will restore the original view. And again, we can also stop the receiving the screen sharing video in case uh, we don't need it for any reason and restore it anytime that we actually need it again. As a last note, notice that we have focused on presentation mode so far, but we actually also have a so-called gallery view that allows you to hide the screen sharing and only focus on the conversation instead. In this case, there's just a single active speaker, but in case more people started sharing their webcam, the gallery layout would be updated accordingly. To contribute audio and video streams to the room, there are ad hoc controls in the upper left side of the UI. This button will allow you to unmute and start talking to the room, while this other button will allow you to start sending your webcam video to the room instead. And while both of these controls are not moderated, it's still good common practice to join the virtual queue in order to let the chairs know that you're actually interested in speaking. Screen sharing instead is always moderated, so you can use this button here to actually request a permission to do exactly that. Let's see what happens now when we unmute our audio and video streams. As you can see, the first thing that happened when we unmuted audio was that our box changed color and a waveform started appearing. That's indicating that the microphone is actually working as expected. And since we also started sharing our video, we can see that we now appear in the speaker's area as well. As we said, though, it's good common practice to, to join the virtual queue before starting to send actually something to the room. So let's mute our streams again and let's follow the right process. So let's join the queue first. This will add us to the virtual queue, which the chair will see as well, and in case they are fine with it, which they'll tell us via the audio stream, then we can actually unmute audio and video. Remaining in the queue is actually a good idea, because chairs have the option to mute everybody that is not in the virtual queue at any given time. We've seen how we could choose which webcam and, and microphone to use when we first join the room, but we can actually change this selection dynamically as well. So you just need to visit the settings icon and then ch click change devices to actually change the device selection once more. So for instance, to, to choose a different microphone or a different webcam to use from now forward. In many working groups, it's not unusual to have just the chair share their screen and then change the presentation depending on which presenter is actually taking their turn. If you actually want to share the screen yourself, instead, 
then just ask the chair to release this, their screen and then ask for permission to share the slides yourselves. So unlike audio and video, this is a moderated request. So you'll need to press this icon to ask permission to share your screen. This will actually reach the, the chair. The chair will eventually possibly grant you permission to share the screen. As soon as you click yes, a, a new dialog will appear where you will be able to choose what, what you want to share. Notice that on some operating systems, you may actually need to grant the browser permission to access your screen in the first place. You can find some additional documentation on the ITF website for that, which for instance explains how to do that on macOS, where you'll need to add the browsers to the screen recording privacy settings. The screen selection dialog may also change from browser to browser, because in some cases you'll be able to choose where to, whether you want to share your whole screen or application, in some other cases you can only share the screen. At any rate, one way or another, you'll be allowed to share something and contribute this to the room. If you're just sharing an application, make sure that it's not minimized or otherwise the streaming may be paused as a result. When you're done with your presentation, all you need to do is go back to the controls that we've seen before and press stop screen again, which will release the floor and allow other people to share the screen instead. You can share your screen as many times as you want during a session. The application provides some additional meeting tools that you can take advantage during the session, like the note-taking tool, for instance. When clicking that button, you'll be given the opportunity to open an integrated view of the Code EMD tool. More specifically, you'll open an instance of the shared document associated with the working group that you're currently in. In this demonstration, the document is empty, but during a live session, you can expect people actually going to take notes using this document. Another commonly asked feature is the ability to actually access the meeting materials from the interface itself, which you can do from this icon over here. Since this is a test room, there's actually no actual content here, but during a live session, you can expect to find both the agenda and the slides for the presentations that are going to take place during the session itself. In case the meeting material content changed after you joined, you can force a refresh of, that, of this material using this button over here. This basically will ask the server to synchronize with the content again, as as soon as that happens, this section will be updating accordingly. If you want to open the meeting materials page on the ITF website, you can use this button for the purpose. Whenever some sort of basic feedback is required of the audience, this can be done using a simple show of hands, which in this tool is completely anonymous. When you click the related button in the user interface, by default you are presented with the latest results of previous show events, for instance, in this case related to a question that the chair asked. A new request for feedback may be asked by chairs at any time during a session. When that happens, a visual notification will appear in the user interface. The icon in the toolbar will also change color to let us know about this in case we miss the notification. Selecting the tool now will give us the option to actually provide feedback, so choose exactly the answer that we want to give back and we'll also be able to see how the, the results change in real time as other people answer the questions. When the shares decide that they have received enough feedback, they can actually close this show event session and the, the results are archived. And that's all. I hope you enjoyed this overview and that it will indeed help you use your time more efficiently in the upcoming ITF meeting. You can find some additional documentation on the meeting website, but in case you need further help or clarifications on anything that was or wasn't covered in this presentation, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And more importantly, if you need help during the meeting itself, we'll be available in all Jabber rooms as usual, so mentioning us there will make sure you get our attention. Enjoy your meeting!